Chapter 10 of He Came to Set the Captives Free. It's The Meeting. Elaine talks. Within two weeks of the day I made Jesus my Lord and Master instead of Satan, I became extremely ill. I had fled to another city, which happened to be in the city in which Memorial Hospital was located. I collapsed and worked and was taken to the emergency room by ambulance. I did not know a physician in that city, so became in that city so became what is known as a clinic patient, which meant that I was assigned to the intern and resident physician on call for that night. I was desperately ill, in severe pain, and so very lonely and frightened. It was in the state as I lay there on the uncomfortable cart in the emergency room that Rebecca walked into my life. I was shocked in the first place. I had never had a woman doctor. Secondly, she was both young and very pretty. But more than that, she radiated something that I couldn't put my finger on but felt strongly. The demons in me felt it too, and they didn't like it at all. I can feel them begin to twist and squirm and grumble, telling me not to have anything to do with this person. Miserable as I was, while she stood talking to me, my eyes seemed to be riveted to the collar of her white coat, where she wore a golden pin which said, Jesus is life. Finally, <clears throat> my curiosity overcame my shyness. Reaching up to touch it, I asked, are you a Christian? Yes. She answered, smiling, are you? I nodded. I became a Christian two weeks ago. Good for you, she said warmly. That's the most important decision anyone can ever make. Then for the second time, that one quiet voice within me spoke saying, listen well to this young woman. She is my servant and will teach you much that you need to know. I knew by then that was the voice of the Lord, but I was still too scared and uncertain to trust it fully. It was many months before I was to reach the point of trusting either the Lord or Rebecca. Rebecca admitted to me, excuse me, Rebecca admitted to me to the hospital that night. Sorry. Rebecca admitted me to the hospital that night, sorry. The next morning, much to my disappointment, I found that she was not going to be my primary physician. I was assigned to a young man under her whom I disliked intensely. He reciprocated that dislike, I might add. He did not believe that I was having pain or even that I was ill. I spent many days and nights in pain and tears because of the uncaring attitude of that young man. The second day after I was admitted, Rebecca came to talk with me. She brought along a Bible, which she gave to me. I was shocked again. Doctors just don't go around giving their patients Bibles, at least not in my experience. No, only did she give me a Bible. She also gave me reading assignments and prayed with me. The first assignment she gave me was to read the book of James. As I read that book, I became more and more angry as it pricked my conscience again and again. The demons didn't like it either. We were all in a thoroughly foul mood by the time she came around the next day. So angry, in fact, that I threw the Bible at her. She just dodged it, picked it up and laughed and said, what's the matter? Did God's word strike some sore spots? Now here's your next assignment. <laughs> Wonderful. Both the demons and I were absolutely furious that our anger didn't seem to affect her at all. That was the first of many sessions with Rebecca looking into the scriptures. Slowly, I began to grow spiritually. The demons were most upset about that. After the demons would, after that, the demons would almost always block me and talk to Rebecca instead of me. They were anything but polite as they tried to drive her away from me. I'm sorry. They were anything but polite as they tried to drive her away from me. Each day I thought that I surely would not see her again, but she always kept coming back for more. Rebecca talks. When I first met Elaine, I had no idea who she was or her involvement in, involvement in Satanism. I bought the Bible for her at the Lord's command. I did not realize at the time that I was speaking mostly with demons, with the demons within Elaine instead of Elaine herself. She was obnoxious, or rather the demons were. She made me angry. That is why I assigned James to her first, because James has too much to say about taming the tongue. Elaine's first say in the hospital. Oh, Jesus, I hope it's Lord. Elaine's first day in the hospital lasted six weeks. 
We put her through every test possible and still could not find out what was wrong. I had not learned about demonic illnesses yet and all my prayers seeking for guidance in her case seemed to be deliberately unanswered. The other physicians all concluded that nothing was really wrong, but I had no peace with that conclusion. Nevertheless, she was finally discharged. Two days later, on my weekend call, Elaine came to the emergency room. She again was my responsibility it, my responsibility until the intern came back on Monday. She had the same complaints of pain and illness. It was a difficult situation. I really thought that she was ill but had no idea what was wrong. Her question to me was a challenging one. Hmm, something just came to my mind about that. Okay, so Dr. Brown, why am I sick? I even went and asked the elders to anoint me with oil and pray and ask God for healing. Why doesn't he answer? Have I done something wrong? This was a real challenge. Not only did I not know what was going on in her body, but the Lord had chosen to remain strangely silent about her despite my many prayers seeking his guidance. I told Elaine that I did not know why the Lord had chosen not to heal her, but that I was sure that the Lord had a purpose for it all. I wrote the admitting orders, thinking that I would simply turn her case over to my intern and one of the specialists and would not have to worry about her anymore. However, the Lord and Elaine had different plans. Elaine talks. Until this second admission under Rebecca's care, I had been relatively safe at the hospital. Satan and his demons are not omnipresent like the Lord, and news often does not travel very fast in his kingdom. No one at the hospital had known about my desertion of Satan and conversion to Christ. But this time, things were different. Many of the doctors and nurses were Satanists, and the word was out. I was to be killed for becoming a traitor to Satan. I spent my whole time fighting for my life. I was much stronger than any of the Satanists there and won fairly easily. I do not know that I was not, so I did not know that I was not supposed to be, to use my powers and Satan had the demons continue to let me use them because they knew that so long as I did, I could not really grow as I should spiritually. I did not, of course, tell Rebecca about any of this. I did not trust her yet, but she was so different than any other doctor that I had ever run into that I was determined to keep her as my own physician. The next day when the specialist came to see me, I recognized him immediately. He was one of the higher Satanists locally. I never liked him. I deliberately picked a fight with him and my demons thoroughly beat him up. In fact, after the first battle, he was so wounded physically that he could not come into the hospital work for three days. It only took me one week to make him hate and fear me so much that he refused to see me anymore, which was precisely what I wanted. The intern was a different matter. He was not a Satanist, but not a Christian either. He already disliked me, but was bound by the rules of his training program to care for me. I made him his life miserable, even as he made mine miserable. I astral projected into his apartment and wrote all over his walls very impolite messages with black marking pen. Oh my gosh. And then signed my name to it. I threw dishes at him when he was, oh my God. I threw dishes at him when he was home and several times was unplugged, several times unplugged his refrigerator so that all his food in it spoiled. Every time he tried to bring anyone to see the messages on the wall, one of my demons would tell me ahead of time, and I would have the demon completely clean the wall before anyone else could come see the writing. He quickly learned that he couldn't say anything to anyone else about what was going on because they all thought he was going crazy. He grew to hate me, fear me so much that within two weeks, he, he too refused to remain on my case. That left Rebecca. There was a love which radiated from her that I couldn't understand but was drawn to. I was fast growing to love her and deep down knew that she was the only one who had the answers to set me free. Now Rebecca's talking. My relief concerning Elaine's case was short-lived. Less than two weeks after her admission, the intern came to me and told me that he did not care what the consequences were. He would not have anything more to do with Elaine. And by the end of that first week, the specialist came and told me that he did not care what I did with Elaine. He was washing his hands of her case. He would not be seeing her again. I was stuck. I didn't know what to do with her either. As Elaine from day to day, I saw Elaine from day to day. We seem to consistently reach only a certain point in her spiritual growth. And then we're blocked by something. Mostly, she was completely obnoxious. I did not know that the demons in her were trying to drive me away. I, didn't, I did not even know that she had demons. 
Time after time, in total frustration, I wanted to simply discharge her and tell her there was nothing more I could do to help her. Always when I reached that point, the Lord would allow Satan to tempt me so that I would fall flat on my face and fail and would have to humbly ask the Lord's forgiveness. When I did, he always said to me, now see the patience I have to have with you. You can't extend that same patience to my child, Elaine. Of course, the Lord always won. So again, I would ask the Lord to put his love in my heart for Elaine and go back to see her the next day. Jesus, so many lessons in this. Finally, after about three weeks, I got serious and spent a whole weekend in prayer and fasting, asking the Lord to give, to give me the key to Elaine's case. Late that Sunday evening, Father spoke to me and said, You have not talked to Elaine about her deep involvement in the occult. It all seems so simple then. I should have recognized the symptoms, but Satan had blocked my mind. That morning, I went in and told Elaine that there was one area that we had not yet discussed. What is that? Your deep involvement in the occult. She was obviously shocked and she sat staring at me in silence for a full minute. How did you know about that? I spent the past weekend fasting and praying and asking the father to reveal to me the key to your case. He told me. I told her that as a Christian, she must confess and all, any and all involvement, involvements in the occult to the Lord as wrong and ask his forgiveness and then ask him to take it all away to close the doorways with his precious blood. Hallelujah. She was completely resistant to this. Finally, in desperation, I said, Elaine, I can't handle you, but I know who can, and that is the Lord. So I'm going to pray now and commit you into his hands and ask him to deal with you. I did so and left. Elaine talks. Oh, I've never been so shocked in my life as I was when Rebecca Cooley walked in that day and asked me about my involvement in the cult. I knew that there were only two places she could have gotten that information. One was from Satan and the other one was from God. That was a real turning point in my life, however. When Rebecca prayed asking the Lord to handle me, he certainly did. In fact, Rebecca prayed that prayer daily from that point on. How I hated her... How I hated for her to do that. But the, lo the Lord broke through all the demonic interference over the following days and weeks. And I slowly began to understand that as a Christian, I must make Jesus the total master in my life as well as Savior. Thank you, Lord. I came to trust Rebecca more and more and my love for her grew as well. I came to realize her deep commitment to the Lord and began to try to pattern my life after hers. I learned things. Through her that the contract I first signed in my own blood years ago was indeed completely canceled out by the blood of Jesus. The struggle was not easy for me or for Rebecca. But each day, through God's grace, I grew a bit is this? more spiritual and my physical problems began to clear up. At last, the day came when Rebecca told me that she had received guidance from the Lord, that the time had come for me to learn to stand on my own feet against Satan outside of the hospital. So I was discharged for the last time. <sighs>